Hey there dev squad, today we're going to be showing you how you can set up sprinting in your shooter game. Hey there, my name is Luke and in today's episode we're going to be breaking down the process of setting up sprint inside of Unreal Engine. We're going to be showing you all of the different logic and blueprints required to create sprinting. By the end of this video, your character is going to have regenerating sprint energy and you are going to be able to move faster when you hold down the key binding. The key binding could be anything from left shift to controller inputs. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now that we're inside of the engine, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can set up the functionality for our sprinting. Now, the first thing that we're going to be approaching is setting up all of the code, which is going to be telling the engine whether the player is currently sprinting and also whether or not they can sprint. So our sprint system is powered by energy. You can see our energy in the bottom left hand corner in our heads up display. And when the player sprints, we are going to be having it so that the sprint energy goes down and when they're not sprinting we are going to be having it so the sprint energy regenerates and goes back up. So let's go ahead and kick things off. So because this is a movement element we are going to be wanting to create all of the code for this within our first person blueprint. So let's go ahead and open this up. Go to first person BP in your content browser, go to blueprints and then first person character. Within here, what we're going to be doing is going down to the bottom and we are going to be creating an input event for when the player presses shift and then we're going to be doing our code. Now for the purpose of adding our inputs correctly, we are going to be going up to edit and then we are going to be going to project settings. Going into our input tab from here, this is where we're going to be creating a brand new action mapping with the name sprint. So go ahead and add a new action mapping. I've already given it the name sprint here. And then this is where you can choose the input that you want to cause your character to sprint. So for me, I've already just typed in left shift to select this. What we can also do is add another action mapping to this group and we can even use gamepad controls if that's something that you want to do. So you can see here, I've got things like gamepad face buttons, I've got my D-pad and all of that good stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna remove that extra action mapping and just carry on with our sprint. So we're gonna close this and then we're gonna get coding our sprint. So what we're gonna do is in our event graph within our first person character, we are going to type in sprint. This is our action event. And any keys that are bound to this input action sprint they are going to be firing off this event, whether it be pressed or released. So what we're going to be doing when we first press that button is checking to see whether or not the player can sprint. And this is going to be tied to some variables or data rather. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a branch node. And then with this, we need to set up our condition. So for this condition, we need those variables. So we're going to create a brand new variable and we are going to be giving this the name sprinting. And we're gonna set the variable type to Boolean. And then we're gonna go ahead and compile this and make sure the default value is set to false. We're also going to be creating another variable and we're gonna be giving this the name sprint energy, just like that. With our sprint energy, we are gonna be setting this to an integer value. We're gonna go ahead and hit compile and we're gonna set the default value to 100. The reason why I've chosen an integer is because we just need a value that is numerical data. We can go all the way from zero, which is no energy at all, all the way up to 100 energy. With that done, what we're gonna do now is go out from our condition and we're gonna be checking to see if our integer is greater than another integer. So simply like this, we're going to be getting the value of our sprint energy and we're going to be checking to see if it is greater than B. So A is greater than B. So our sprint energy needs to be greater than our B, which is zero for this to return true. So as long as they've got more than zero sprint energy, we are going to start this sprint sequence. So with that, what we're going to do is from our true, we are going to set sprinting to true. And from our false, we are going to be setting our sprinting to false, just like that. 
And with this done, what we can now do is start working on the actual movement element of this. And the way we're going to do this, changing the character's speed, is by going over to our character movement component. What we've got in here is a handy little variable that we can change called walk speed. So if we search for this in the top of our details panel, you can see the default value for this is 600. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting this value. So set max walk speed of our character movement component. And all I did there was just drag it out from our components panel to get a reference to this and then set that max walk speed. If it is true, so they are sprinting, we're going to be setting this up to a nice high value. So we're going to be setting this to 1200 for now so that we can see this very clearly. If you want to adjust your sprinting speed, this is exactly where you're going to be changing it. What we're also going to be doing is setting the max walk speed if they are not sprinting, which we're going to do like this. And we're going to set this to 600 because that is our default value. So they're returning to that default speed. So with that done, let's go ahead and add a little bit more code. The next piece of code that I need here is to simply reduce the amount of sprint energy the player has got. So what we're going to be doing is going out of here and we are going to set our sprint energy. And what we're going to do is go in, we are going to set this to an integer minus integer and then we are going to take the original sprint energy just like that and we are going to minus 5 from it just like that and with this done what we're then going to do is run a delay so if they're continuing to sprint every 0 0.1 seconds we are going to be taking away 5 of our sprint energy and you can actually reduce this number if that's something that you want to do. So once we've got our code, we can start fine tuning the values like this. So with that done, what we're then going to do is move on to a branch check. And that branch check is simply going to see whether or not they're still sprinting or rather if they have got enough energy to do that. So what we're going to do is if our sprinting is true so they haven't released that button then what we're going to do is go all the way back to the start here and check to see if they've got enough energy to continue that. If we now take a step back and hit compile we are going to be able to test this system out. So if we go ahead and press play we can go in we can hold down our shift and as you can see it is going to get quicker and after a small period of time, it is going to stop sprinting because you ran out of energy. So we've got two more things left to cover in this video. That being how we can tie the sprint energy to the heads up display and also how we can regenerate our sprint energy as well. So let's cover the heads up display. So if we go to our first person folder in our content browser, HUD, and then if we go to our HUD widget, we're going to select our text for our stamina. And with this, we're going to go down to content, our text, and we are going to be giving ourselves a binding. This binding is essentially going to bind the variable to the text on the screen so the player can see the value of that variable. So what you want to do then is go ahead and start off by giving this function a name. You can do this in the top left hand corner We've got get text underscore stamina. We're going to right click and we're going to rename this stamina binding just like that. And then what we're going to do from here within our event graph is we are going to be casting to our first person character and we are simply going to get ourselves the value of our sprint energy. So as first person character, get sprint energy and then with this, we are going to be putting this into our return value. And for this, we're going to be converting an integer to text. So we have got some settings that we can use to change around with this, such as your minimum integral digits. So do you want to just have it display one or zero one? It's entirely up to you, but you can play around with these. So we are going to be setting this to one 
as is, and also with our first person character, make sure you get a reference to the player character so that this cast is successful. So essentially, what our code here is doing is referencing our first person blueprint class, taking our sprint energy, and then converting it to a piece of text and binding it to this text component that we've got. If we go ahead and hit compile and then minimize this, we can see this. So by default, we had 100 sprint energy. If I hold down shift, you can see that value going down. And once it got down to zero, you saw that it stopped us sprinting. Now, if you wanna go in there and you want to change your speed that it goes down, you can. So we can change the sprint energy from five every 0.1 seconds to one. Now, there's a reason why I've got this delay at such a low value. It's so that it is a smooth transition going down from 100 to zero. So ideally, you just want to be changing this value here. So if we go ahead and compile this, we now know that we are going to have about 10 seconds of our sprint, which I think is good for me. If you wanna make any further adjustments to that, by all means, you can. So now that we've been able to test this and we can see our sprint energy is going down as we sprint, you are going to notice as we release this, it is not going to stop us from sprinting. So what we're gonna have to do is open this up and make sure that we utilize our released. This is where we're going to be stopping our sprinting. So our code here for stopping sprinting, which simply sets the value of sprinting to untrue, and then our max walk speed back to the default value, we are simply going to take this and put it into there. If we hit compile, now what it's gonna do is when you release shift, it is going to stop you from sprinting as you can see there. And we can go in, we can sprint, we can stop, and we can stop at any value that we like. So that is the core functionality for our sprinting setup. The last thing that I wanna show you is how you can get it to regenerate your sprint energy. So let's go and do that. So we're gonna be opening up our first person character and then within here, what we're gonna be doing is creating a new function. And this function is going to be containing all of our code for regenerating our sprint energy. So add a new function. We are going to give this the name regen sprint. And then with this, all we're gonna be doing is going in and we are going to be setting the value of our sprint energy. And we are going to be adding on our sprint energy, so integer plus integer. And we are gonna do this so that it adds one or say five every couple of seconds. So we're gonna take our sprint energy and we're gonna place it in just like that. Now, this is just a function, it's just code. It's not going to be called unless we ask it to. So what we're gonna do is essentially get this function to repeat over and over and over again so that you're constantly getting yourself sprint energy. So what we're gonna do is go to our event graph. We are then gonna go to our begin play code and we created our widget at the start of this sequence. We're then just going to loop this function. So we're going to delete all of this VR stuff that we don't need. We are then going to create a function. We are then going to be using the set timer by function name. And this is essentially going to allow us to loop a function. And we are going to be using the set timer by function name, which is going to allow us to take a function such as regen sprint and we can put it into, and we can take a function such as our regen sprint and we can place it into there. And then we can also check looping and we can tell it to run every so many seconds. So the time here, I'm gonna set this to every one second or every 0.5 seconds, we are going to be regenerating five of our sprint energy. If we go ahead and hit compile and play, we are going to see it is going up and up. And as I sprint, I can use this and it's gonna to continue to go up. Now, there is one slight problem with this. So first things first, 
we don't want it to go over 100. So what we're going to be doing is going into our regen sprint and then we are going to run a branch check and we are going to check to see if our sprint energy, our new sprint energy is greater than the value that we're looking for, which is 100. So integer greater than integer. If it is greater than 100, then all we're going to do is set our sprint energy to 100. And this is essentially just going to stop it from ever going over 100. So go ahead and hit compile, hit play, and you're going to see now it is going to max out at 100. But what you're also going to notice is that our sprint is regenerating faster than we can use it. So having said that, we're going to go in, we're going to go over to our value here for our sprint energy, and we're going to change this value from 5 to 1 so that it regenerates 5 times slower. If we press play now, hold down shift, you can see we can use that energy there and it's going down really slowly. Now, the reason why it's going down quite slowly there is because you're still regenerating energy while you're using it. So that is something else that we've got to tackle. But by now, you should have a good understanding of how you can regenerate your energy and how you can determine how fast this is by using this value here for setting and adding this much energy in addition to your time integer over here in addition to your time float, which is going to change how often it is going to add this amount of sprint energy. So what we're going to do within our regen sprint is before we run any of this code, we are going to be running a branch check. And this branch check is just simply going to be checking to see whether or not our sprinting is true. If it is true, we do not want it to regenerate. If it is false, and we're not sprinting, only then do we want it to actually give us our sprint energy. So go ahead and hit compile with these changes done using the branch node, minimize this, and then press play. As you can see here now, if I hold down shift, it is going to use my sprint energy, and after a little while, it is going to run out of energy and stop for us. So give us a couple of seconds. It's got down to zero, it stopped the sprint, and you can see our sprint energy is now slowly going up and up again. That's it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed it. By now you should have your sprint set up and working with increased speed when you hold down the shift key. If you have any questions or want to add to this tutorial, be sure to check out our Discord server, the link is in the description, to meet other aspiring developers. Also, please check out our Patreon to make more videos like this possible, but as always guys, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus signing out.